IB Biology, Human Physiology, Part 12, is the second of three parts covering neurons and synapses. In Human Physiology, Part 12, Neurons and Synapses B, this movie, the focus will be on the nature of the impulse, the details of the depolarization of the neuron membrane. The essential idea is neurons transmit the message, synapses modulate the message. Here is the first of two slides that provide an outline of all available movies for Topic 6, Human Physiology, for SL and HL students. Use the outline to find the movie you need for review. This movie is focused here. Here is the second slide of the outline for all available movies for Topic 6, Human Physiology. Here is an IB syllabus statement that I covered in the last movie, Neurons and Synapses A. You should be able to annotate a diagram of the structure of a neuron, including dendrites, cell body with the nucleus, elongated axon, the myelin sheath, nodes of Ranvier, and motor end plates. In this diagram of a motor neuron, you can see the direction of signal propagation along the cell membrane, from the dendrites, along the cell body, and along the axon to the axon terminals, where this neuron synapses with another neuron, or could synapse with an effector, a muscle or a gland. You can see the myelin sheath that surrounds the axon, and the gaps in the sheath known as nodes of Ranvier. Again, a motor neuron, we see the dendrites, the cell body with the nucleus, the elongated axon, the myelin sheath with the nodes of Ranvier, and the motor end plates here called axon terminals. The motor end plates synapse with effector cells such as muscles or glands. The propagation of the impulse along the membrane occurs in this direction, jumping from node to node to node, known as saltatory conduction. The dendrites of the neuron have synapses with presynaptic neurons that bring the impulse to this particular cell, where the impulse runs along the membrane in this direction to the axon terminals, which also have synapses with postsynaptic neurons or with effectors. The impulse jumps from node to node to node, allowing the impulse to move rapidly along the axon in a saltatory, jumping fashion. If you're not sure you understand what I've just said, please review the last movie, Part 11, Neurons and Synapses A. So what is the electrical impulse and what initiates an impulse? What happens? To understand the nature of an impulse, we must start with the resting state, the resting state where there is no impulse happening. It's a condition of charge around the membrane of the neuron. You can see the neuron membrane here and here, as well as the cytoplasm. Notice that the membrane has more positive charge outside the membrane and more negative, in a relative sense, inside or within the cell. Negatively charged proteins assist in making the inside of the cell more negative relative to the outside. The charge difference, the charge difference is known as the polarized state, a polarized state. It's a difference in charge on either side of the membrane. There is electrical potential here, an energy potential, because these opposite charges attract, so the positive and negative charges, separated as they are, are waiting, waiting, ready to rush towards each other. This is the resting state, or the resting potential, but it is a high potential energy condition. The polarized state, the resting potential, comes as a result of the sodium-potassium pump. The sodium-potassium pump actively transports three sodium ions out of a neuron and two potassium ions into a neuron to generate the resting potential. And the membrane potential can be measured with a voltmeter and an oscilloscope. The 3 to 2 ratio of ions established by the sodium-potassium pump creates a charge difference in a resting neuron of 70 millivolts. The negative sign is used to identify the inside of the membrane as being more negative in charge relative to the outside. While both sodium and potassium ions are positively charged, the 3 to 2 ratio, 3 sodium out, 
for every two potassium in, as well as negatively charged proteins, establishes the charge difference. More positive outside the cell and more negative inside the neuron. The sodium potassium pump should be review. It's a protein embedded in the membrane of the neuron and it spends ATP to undergo conformational shape change to pump three sodium ions out of the neuron and two potassium ions in. This establishes the resting state of a neuron, more positive charge outside, less positive inside. So here are the relevant IB syllabus statements. Define resting potential and explain the generation of resting potential. Resting potential is the polarized condition where there is a difference in charge on either side of a resting neuron. The inside of the membrane is 70 millivolts less positive than the outside of the membrane. The sodium potassium pump is responsible for resting potential. And that brings us to the term stimulus. A stimulus is any condition in the environment which causes the membrane potential to vary from the resting potential. And then we need to be able to explain how a nerve impulse passes along an axon, including the roles of the sodium and potassium ions in an action potential. Include the details on ion channels and active transport. You already know the active transport part of the story. So, the action potential, the impulse, starts with depolarization. Nerve impulses are action potentials that propagate along the membrane of the axon of a neuron. Notice at this location on the membrane, the inside of the membrane is more positive in charge relative to the outside, which is more negative. Sodium has diffused down its gradient to the inside of the cell to cause the inside to be more positive. This is called depolarization. The depolarization event propagates or shifts along the axon and this is called an action potential. Propagation of nerve impulses is the result of local currents around the membrane that cause each successive part of the axon to depolarize. The details of sodium diffusion into the cell along with potassium diffusion out of the cell are details ahead of us. Be patient. So again, we can see depolarization of the membrane here and the impulse, the depolarization, shifts along the axon in this direction. Sodium has rushed into the cell here and then here and then it'll happen here and here and here as the propagation of the impulse moves along the membrane. Again, more on the sodium and potassium ions in the, in the slides to come. Be on the lookout. Now, the propagation of nerve impulses is a result of local currents that cause each successive part of the axon to depolarize in this direction. But, as each new section depolarizes due to changes in local currents, the former section repolarizes again to assume resting state. The sodium-potassium pump serves this role. You can see the region of depolarization here. The action potential is moving left to right, and propagation of nerve impulses along the membrane is a result of local currents that cause each successive part of the axon to depolarize. The action potential has already ended here, so the membrane is repolarized with more positive charge outside. The action potential is starting here, so depolarization is about to occur due to local currents changing the conditions of the membrane. You can see the region of depolarization of an axon membrane right here, and in this diagram the action potential, the impulse, is sweeping left to right along the membrane. The region just ahead of the depolarization is still polarized with more positive charges outside the membrane and more negative inside the cell. This region has just experienced the action potential. It is now repolarized as it returns to resting state. Action potentials can be measured with a voltmeter and they produce a trace on an oscilloscope that appears like this one. We will analyze oscilloscope traces later in this movie. One more time, 
we can see the action potential sweep along the membrane from left to right. The action potential consists of a depolarization that shifts as a result of local currents that cause the next region of the membrane to depolarize. Once the action potential has moved past, the membrane repolarizes. See that here? And that's due to the sodium potassium pump. The depolarization and the repolarization occurs because of changes in the position of sodium and potassium ions. You can see glimpses of those ions changing position in this image. More of that to come. Propagation of nerve impulses along the membrane is the result of local currents that cause each successive part of the axon to depolarize. So here are the relevant IB syllabus statements, statements with which you might be comfortable. Define resting potential and action potential which is depolarization and repolarization together. Explain the generation of resting potential. The explanation of resting potential lies in the action of the sodium potassium pump. So the resting potential is the difference in charge on either side of a resting neuron. It's 70 millivolts with a negative sign in front because the inside of the membrane is 70 millivolts less positive than the outside of the membrane. The action potential is a rapid, self-propagating depolarization of the neuron membrane followed by repolarization of the membrane. In order to understand the fundamental nature of an action potential, depolarization and repolarization, you need to know that there are no less than three neuron membrane proteins of importance. You already know the sodium-potassium pump establishes the resting potential by active transport three sodium ions out for two potassium ions in. In the resting state, the outside of the membrane is more positive than the inside. But two other proteins serve in the role of facilitated diffusion. One protein, when it opens, facilitates the diffusion of sodium into the cell. This is the depolarization event. One other protein, when it opens, facilitates the diffusion of potassium out of the cell. This is the repolarization event. Remember, these two proteins are good examples of facilitated diffusion. What causes the proteins to open or close has to do with local currents, charges, around the membrane. In other words, these proteins serve as voltage-regulated gates, voltage-regulated gates. The opening and closing of these gates have nothing to do with active transport, but everything to do with the charges of ions around them, the local currents around them. Remember, the propagation of the impulse is the result of local currents. Let's look at how those gates work. In the resting state, all voltage-regulated gates are closed. The sodium gate is closed, the potassium gate is closed. The sodium-potassium pump, not seen here, establishes the polarized condition known as resting potential. At the beginning of the action potential, the neuron membrane depolarizes. Sodium gates open due to a change in charge in the adjacent upstream region. Sodium diffuses into the cell, as you can see here, and the outside of the membrane becomes negative relative to the inside. Then, as the action potential propagates along the membrane, the membrane repolarizes. The sodium gates close and the potassium gates open, again, due to changes in local currents around those proteins. Potassium diffuses out of the cell, as you can see here, and this returns the positive charge to the outside of the membrane. The potassium gate closes somewhat slowly, allowing potassium to continue to diffuse out, causing the membrane to be hyperpolarized, hyperpolarized for a brief period of time. And then both gates close, and the sodium potassium pump returns the membrane to resting potential. Nerve impulses are action potentials along axons of neurons as a result of local currents 
that cause each successive part of the axon to reach a threshold potential. Now remember, the action potential consists of both depolarization and repolarization of the neuron membrane. But there's another way to see action potentials, or view them, or study them, by analyzing oscilloscope traces showing resting potentials and action potentials. Action potentials can be measured using a voltmeter and an oscilloscope. Here is an oscilloscope trace of an action potential that shows the change in the charge around the membrane. As a note, the change in charge around the voltage regulated gates needs to exceed negative 40 millivolts, the threshold potential. If the stimulus does not cause the membrane potential to rise above negative 40 millivolts, then an action potential does not occur. Here is an oscilloscope tracing of an action potential. This is the resting potential. Here is the neuron resting prior to the arrival of the action potential. The action potential is an event that occurs in milliseconds, and it starts with a rapid depolarization where the inside of the neuron becomes positive due to sodium ions diffusing in. Depolarization is followed by repolarization, where the inside of the neuron becomes more negatively charged, and this results from potassium ions diffusing out. There is a brief period of hyperpolarization before the neuron returns to resting potential, again, all in milliseconds. Upon a stimulus, the voltage-regulated sodium gates open and sodium ions flow into the neuron. The membrane potential shifts from negative 6570 to positive 30 or 40 as the inside of the neuron becomes more positively charged. The change in the charge currents around the voltage-regulated potassium gates allows the potassium gates to open and potassium diffuses out of the neuron, resulting in repolarization. The action potential propagates along the neuron membrane as the result of local currents that cause each successive part of the axon to reach the threshold potential. Upon a stimulus, the charge milieu around the membrane causes voltage-regulated sodium gates to open, but enough gates must open to reach the threshold potential. If threshold potential is reached, then sodium rushes into the neuron, depolarization. The charges around the membrane cause the sodium gates to close and the potassium gates to open. Potassium diffuses out, repolarization. The action potential, which lasts for only a fraction of a second along any one location of the neuron, corresponds to the movement of ions when the inside of the membrane becomes more positive relative to the outside. In this diagram, you can see the relationship between the oscilloscope tracing and the charges around the membrane. This image of an action potential has all phases of the oscilloscope tracing labeled. Study this image as need be. Here is a relevant IB syllabus statement state that a nerve impulse is only initiated if the threshold potential is reached. Here is an oscilloscope tracing where the stimulus was not strong enough to cause the membrane potential to reach threshold. No action potential occurred. In this image, we can see threshold potential. We see a stimulus and a second, neither of which were strong enough to bring the membrane potential to threshold. No action potential occurred. But here, we have a series of successive stimuli that together were strong enough to have the membrane potential reach threshold, resulting in an action potential. In this oscilloscope tracing, there were two weak stimuli that failed to bring the membrane to threshold without an action potential, but that one stimulus was strong enough to result in an action potential that would propagate down the membrane. And so we return to saltatory conduction, where the impulse jumps from node to node to node. The myelination of the nerve membrane allows for saltatory conduction because the depolarization of the membrane occurs only at the nodes.
the impulse jumps from node to node, and this rapidly moves the impulse along the axon membrane. In this slide, we see a myelinated neuron in the upper portion of the slide and a non-myelinated neuron in the lower portion. Impulses move rapidly along a neuron due to the myelin sheath seen here. The impulse jumps from node to node because the depolarization of the membrane occurs only at the nodes. In non-myelinated neurons, the impulses move more slowly as the action potential chugs along every square centimeter of the membrane rather than jumping. With the next half dozen slides or so, let me review the relationship between the action potential tracing on an oscilloscope, seen here, and the voltage-regulated membrane proteins that explain the action potential. I will explain images of the voltage-regulated proteins according to the numbers seen on this tracing. I'll start with the number 1, resting potential, negative 70 millivolts prior to the arrival of a stimulus that initiates the action potential. Here are the voltage-regulated proteins, the sodium channel proteins, the potassium channel proteins. All voltage-regulated gates are closed in the resting state. The polarized condition of the membrane is maintained by the sodium potassium pump. Number two, a stimulus causes the membrane potential to exceed threshold. An action potential is initiated rapid depolarization. Number two, voltage regulated sodium gates are open, allowing sodium to diffuse into the cytoplasm of the neuron this causes depolarization. Number three, the membrane repolarizes. Number three, the sodium gates close and the potassium gates open. Potassium diffuses out of the neuron and the membrane potential returns to resting potential. Number four, the diffusion of potassium out of the neuron causes a brief hyperpolarization of the membrane. Number four, the potassium gates remain open a little longer as they are slow to close. And as the potassium gates close, the membrane returns to resting state as the sodium potassium pump actively moves ions to reestablish resting potential. In the resting state, both the sodium and potassium voltage regulated gates are closed and the membrane potential is reestablished as the membrane is polarized due to the sodium potassium pump. And can you explain how the myelination of nerve fibers allows for saltatory conduction of the impulse? The impulse jumps rapidly from node to node to node down the axon as a result of the myelination of the axon. This is because the depolarization of the axon membrane only occurs at the nodes of Ranvier. You should be able to label all of the parts of a motor neuron, a neuron that stimulates a muscle at the axon terminals. You should also be able to tell which direction the impulse is carried along the membrane of a neuron. See me in class if you're not sure. At this point, with the study of the neuron, your knowledge of membrane proteins has grown tremendously. Here is a list of membrane protein functions, most of which should be familiar to you. I'll let you study this slide on your own. And that brings us to the end of IB Bio Topic 6 Human Physiology Part 12, Neurons and Synapses B.